Welcome to the state of Ohio. I'm Karen Kassler. For more than two weeks, hospitals have seen record numbers of patients hospitalized with COVID-19. And the number of patients in intensive care has nearly doubled in two weeks in Ohio. The daily case numbers are near the range. Former Ohio Department of Health Director Dr. Amy Acton and others predicted in April if the state didn't flatten the curve, which it did for a time. These scary statistics brought Governor Mike DeWine back on the airwaves for a statewide address on Wednesday night, his first since July. And it wasn't just a pep talk. State House correspondent Andy Chow reports. The state of Ohio saw a record of more than 6,100 confirmed cases of COVID-19 reported in a 24-hour span this week, the largest report of new cases since the beginning of the pandemic. The state is currently averaging a 10% positivity rate, which means one in 10 people who get tested for COVID-19 have a positive result. And now the surge is starting to take a toll on hospitals. Hospitalizations, ICU admissions, and deaths are a lagging number with COVID-19, which means a rise in cases on one day means higher numbers a week or two down the line for hospitals. Dr. Robert Wiley of the Cleveland Clinic says they're experiencing a staffing shortage with hundreds of employees needing to stay home. So now is the time to wear a mask and socially distance. If not to protect your family, your friends, and your community, then help protect the caregivers, which not only have to take care of COVID patients, we need them in place, but for all the other things that people come in the hospital for. But the latest numbers show that asking people to observe the best practices for slowing the spread of the virus isn't working. After weeks of encouraging mask wearing, Governor Mike DeWine announced a new health order that requires businesses to post signs at entrances mandating masks. Businesses must ensure customers and employees wear masks, and a compliance unit of Bureau of Workers' Compensation agents will inspect these businesses. The first violation comes with a written warning, with a second violation possibly shutting down the businesses for 24 hours. DeWine also hinted more orders could be ahead. If the current trend continues and cases keep increasing, we will be forced We'll be forced to close restaurants, bars, and fitness centers. We will look at this one week from tomorrow. I'm very well aware of the burden that this will place on employees. I'm well aware of the burden this places on the owners. But these are places, candidly, where it's difficult or impossible to maintain mask wearing which we know now is the chief way of slowing this virus. And DeWine also notes that students are coming home from colleges and universities for Thanksgiving, and those institutions may have to be all remote learning in January if numbers don't improve. Experts at DeWine's press conferences have said a mass shutdown wouldn't be effective because many outbreaks have been connected to social gatherings, such as weddings, funerals, and parties. He's targeting those with another order. We have seen great tragedy, great tragedy associated with some of these events. Now, it's not the ceremonies causing the problem. It's the party afterward. So to address this, we will be issuing a new order in the next few days that will place significant new restrictions on these social activities. Specifically, open congregate areas can no longer be open. This requires, the order also requires everyone to be seated, everyone to wear a mask, unless they are actively consuming food or drinks. And the order prohibits things such as dancing and games. The new policy changes and potential for future shutdowns comes as hospitals step closer to reaching capacity. Statewide, hospitals are at 75% capacity for inpatient care and in the ICU. The state has created a plan for potential overflow in an emergency, something DeWine has said he wants to avoid. Andy Chow, State House News Bureau.